Um, hello. Back to the German accent. Um, my name is Anja Dirks, and I am uh, now, since uh, this last September, I am the director of the Belluar Festival in uh, Fribourg, in Switzerland. Um, it is a, a small town on on the language border, actually, uh, between the German-speaking and the French-speaking part of uh, Switzerland. It's a more or less bilingual uh, city. Uh, it's a small festival. It, um, small meaning we're presenting around 20 different projects, but the overall audience uh, will be like maybe 5,000 people, which is not that small when you consider that uh, Fribourg has only 40,000 inhabitants. So it's uh, quite a contrast to the TCAF festival, which I attended um, recently, thanks to this project. And um, this, Fribourg, this festival, this Belluar festival in Fribourg has been there for a long time. It was it's one of these festivals that was founded in the early 80s, like so many in Europe have been. It comes from that time. It's sort of, you still can sort of feel that spirit haunting it sometime, which is also a nice thing. And it's uh, very particular because uh, it is uh, inherently site-specific, because uh, it doesn't it doesn't happen in a in a theater or in any kind of uh, cultural institution. But it, the main venue and that gave gave it is, its name as well is uh, a uh, fortress from 1492. So from the 15th century, it's it was part of the fortification of the town of Fribourg. Um, the city wall, and there were three of these fortresses. One is left, and uh, it has been used since 19, I think, 83, um, as a venue for this for this festival. So that is like the condition, the context uh, that I'm working in right now. I have before. I was thinking I would give you a very short overview on my background. Um, my festival and curating experience uh, starts in the year 2000 when I started working as the assistant uh, to the artistic director of uh, the festival Theater der Welt here in this region. Some of you might remember it was a festival in four cities, which I can tell by experience is not a good thing to do. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> it's, uh, it was in Bonn, Cologne, Düsseldorf and Duisburg. Uh, Matthias Linienthal was the artistic director, I was his assistant, so this was sort of my, well, my school. <laughs> And uh, then I very shortly, briefly worked in Düsseldorf in the Forum Freies Theater before I went to Switzerland. I worked there at the Theaterhaus Gessnerallee for three years. It's a venue for independent uh, performing arts. And then I worked one year for the Wiener Festwochen. And uh, after that, I became the director of Festival Theaterform, and that has been mentioned here, where I worked for six years. I was uh, in, in charge of six. Uh, editions of this uh, festival. It's a theatre festival, but the name means it's, I had a lot of funny encounters with people saying, I don't quite get this title, Theatre for Men. What, what, is, what is that? And, uh, so for the non-German speaking, it, it's, it's the plural of, for, it's forms, it's the German plural. Yeah, and that's, that's the nice thing about this festival is that it's that plural. It's, it's, um, that's the idea. So, <laughs> that one never fails. <laughs> um, so, uh, these are the different contexts I have been, I have been working in. I have, uh, I have uh, been in charge in different uh, positions also of, of selecting program and um, just to, to give you a bit of, of my background. Now, um, Sigrid Garas has an announced that we would get give in-depth uh, area studies of our respective fields. And um, I sort of thought that I could pull myself out of the <laughs> affair by saying that, I mean, I'm from Europe, so are most of you. <laughs> you know what's going on here. Um, so, I mean, I honestly, to, uh, to the joke aside, I feel like that is something that I'm absolutely, in a way, not able to do, even though, of course, I, I guess I do know a bit about the scene in Europe, but of course, only from practical experience also. I share that approach of Ahmed. I, 
you rarely have the, the, the you rarely have the occasion, and this is why this is nice to step aside and really look at yourself and uh, at yourself inside this field and, and, and reflect on what you are doing. So I I couldn't really give you an analysis of the field of curating in the contemporary performing arts in Western Europe. I, that's way too much for me. But um, then I can also not come with empty hands here. So I, I, I'm just going to give you a few of my thoughts about some aspects of, uh, of the situation here. And, and then later on, as I have announced, I will share with you uh, a list. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, originally it was a to-do list, but there are also a few don'ts on it. So now it's a to-do and not to-do list. Um, it was, uh, uh, it, it sort of appeared last year when I was um, hosting a um, residence program in Switzerland in the festival, uh, Theater Festival Basel. Um, it's called Watch and Talk, it's a very nice program, I might get back to that uh, later on. And um, it was uh, a residence for curators, for programmers for people programming and performing arts, and I was sort of the host, and we had a lot of discussions, and after these discussions, uh, I made this list. So it's, it's also not only my list, it was sort of uh, nourished by other uh, programmers, but I was the one formulating it, and I'm very clear on that it's a list that is sort of addressed to me more than to anyone else. I don't want it to be understood as uh, something that I would say is true for everybody. It's, this is something I, my, these are my thoughts, I'm going to share that with you later. But back to the situation in, um, in uh, Europe, in Western Europe. Um, there have, has been quite some complaint in Europe, as well, at least here in Germany. Um, the complaint concerns the so-called festival, festivalization of the performing arts. I don't even know if that word exists in English, but um, the, I think you're getting it. The criticism is that the in-depth confrontation with the artwork has been replaced by um, hysterically hyped events that follow each other in high frequency. Um, this, this kind of criticism, of course, often comes from a rather privileged position. That means from, from insiders of the theater business, often from critics, and not so much from audiences, but because for them it's most of the time not so much of a problem because they are, don't have uh, events in front of their nose all the time. And um, I wonder if this criticism does not in fact speak also of a fear of losing control, um, of not having an overview anymore about what is happening as so much is happening at once. And personally, um, and this is my first point, I do not really mind this decentralization of the attention. I think it could also be seen as a kind of democratization, that there is not really anyone anymore who can claim having the authority on saying what in performing arts is relevant and what is not, and what is like really good art and, and not so good and really important. And I think it, this might also be a good thing. And this high um, number of festivals or festival kind of events that are happening, uh, yeah, it's also positive because, uh, because it creates a lot of small centers instead of a few big ones with, to which only privileged people have access. Um, there has also been, uh, also very recently, especially in Berlin, the German people will know what I mean, uh, a lot of complaints about so-called curators now, I personally uh, do not like the word curator for describing what I do, uh, which is putting together a program of a festival or a season in, in performer jobs. Uh, I like the origin of the word, which has something to do with caretaking and with investing in relationships. Um, that's rather nice, I think, but the connotation it comes with uh, which is more one of doing your shopping in showcases, uh, of hyping one artist while dropping another, of forcing concepts over uh, works of art. Uh, that one, I don't like it so much, and it doesn't really describe the reality of what I do. So in my understanding, what I do is a lot less than curating, in a way, and it's at the same time a lot more. 
Now, because I think the thing is, and Ahmed has already touched that topic, that performing arts is a very slow art. It's a rather clumsy art. It takes a lot of effort and it's very expensive to bring people uh, to places to, to show their art there. I mean, it's super obvious, I know, but it's, of course, much more complicated to, to bring people than objects in today's globalized world, the world, especially when they need a visa. This is becoming really mm -hmm. an issue. A very, very important issue. Um, it also takes, you know, you, you have to consider in, in theater, now we speak theater, you often have to consider language, translation. It's, it's, it's not something you can do easily. And all the new technology that we have, it doesn't help us that much in the, in the performing arts. Um, so when you put together a program, because of, I think, the specific nature of performing arts, you often make pr pr pragmatic decisions. For example, you take to, uh, decisions together with others when you join forces to make a work tour. Because it obviously makes more sense to bring something from far away if it has several places where it will be shown than just one. It's also a budget thing. Um, even when you do a lot of traveling, you will never, never come near to something like an overview of what is happening worldwide. It's absolutely, completely impossible and everybody knows that. <laughs> so you make decisions based on coincidences of encounters that you made and others you didn't. So in places you happen to be and in other places you were just not there. So. That's, it's just like that. You depend on others a lot, particularly on those who give money. And on their side, they will also fa follow funding fashions or are restricted by criteria who are again defined by politicians or administrations. So there is a lot of dependency there. And then you will be doing certain things because you can fund them and others you will not do them because you cannot finance them. That is also a reality. You will be limited by the spaces you have at your disposal. Like I said, I have a fortress from the 15th century. That's, that's a severe, it has a severe influence on the programming decisions I, I make. And it allows to present certain things and certain not. And you will try to also think about how to make sure that your houses are full. Because in performing arts, if there's only 10 people sitting in that, this auditorium, that is something you don't want. So. You need to also make sure that that in some way you can you can you can apprehend that, that there will be people coming. So with all these these restrictions and conditions and many other more, I think there is not so much space left for pure programmatic choices or for an overall curatorial concept. And I think it's a rather good thing, in fact, because it requires another kind of thinking away from hit parades of relevance, a thinking in platforms of contexts. It means acknowledging that a festival is developed through numerous dialogues and exchanges that ultimately lead to the puzzle becoming something like a picture. Because on the other side, there's also the, like the reading the festival side, not only the making side of it, on the other side, audiences usually do not go see a festival, and usually they also do not evalu evalu evaluate an entire season. Now, for example, in Theaterform, we made an inquiry with our audience in both cities. The results were very similar. Um, and we asked them, the audience, just a few questions, because we wanted to know who they are, blah, blah, blah. And we also asked them how many shows they were seeing within the festival program. And I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I know that more than 60% saw one or two out of 25 or so things that we had on the program. So now my, my, my concept, my idea of things I put into context, well, if people see only one or two shows, then, I mean, I don't have, in, I think in performing arts, we just don't have control or we have less control of how what we present will be interpreted, which I think is something positive. <clears throat> Although, even the fiercest festival goer can only see one show at a time. I think that's also uh, 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 relevant uh, because usually when you, while you see a performance, you will not typically relate it to other things in a program. While you're watching it, you might do, do that later. But, so it's still sort of, the, for the audience, it's first and foremost the individual, individual work that, that matters. 
Um, so what I believe what one does when putting together a program is rather create contexts in which, in the best case, an artwork and its audience can meet. And, and we all have, I think, made that experience that a work can function super well if the context is right and it can just not work at all if the context doesn't look right. And I think a lot of what a curator or programmer or festival maker or so as work and responsibility is, is to try to find ways of making sure that the context is right, that this, that this encounter can happen. Um, then the last thing is uh, for an audience, in my experience, it does not matter whether a work is new or not, or whether it is a European premiere or even a world premiere, or if it has been touring since years. When audience see a work if, for the first time, it will be new to them. So, in a way, I, I feel like we are witnessing, first of all, a decentralization of the attention, since there's such a variety in aesthetics and forms and topics, so any kind of hit parading becomes absurd. And I guess we probably have a change of paradigm going on, away from the so-called new, away from premieres, from discovering young talents or even foreign cultures, towards other kinds of specific relevances for specific contexts. Um, I know this, this, this model of the curator who is traveling alone to a remote and exotic country and discovers some never heard of, super talented, uh, young artist or a group, it's old school. And I think we are in fact really past that, but it's still very present in, in I, I, I realize every time when you present a program, you are asked these questions and you realize people think that that's what you're doing but it's not. So I, we really think, I think it's really have, have to chase that ghost away. So in the context of trying to find out then which, if we, we, we would re really need other criteria, if it's not about presenting new or presenting a lot in a few times, or like the Olympics, you know, with theater from five continents, or this kind of things, if, if that's not what you're doing, then you will have to become more specific. You will really have to, um, you will have to either, it can, this I think can be, I don't know, I don't have all the answers to that, but I think it can be you work around certain topics or contexts like uh, Florian has given a very little example of his thoughts for Impulsa this year. It, 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 it also has to do a lot with you uh, really focusing on where you are and what the needs are uh, where, you, um, where you work. And if we manage to use these, 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 these sort of moments of his attention or intense uh, experience, which are festivals, uh, to, to create, um, to, to, to create some, to tell the other stories, then I think it could really be something helpful. Because the question is, of course, especially when you do international work, is which representation of the world is it that we are giving? What is international? I mean, this question was also raised international for a long time. That was London, Paris, New York, this kind of thing. Now, <coughs> suddenly, of course, the, 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 well, the world has obviously very much changed. And still, uh, when you look at programs of international festivals in Europe, you will, well, a little less nowadays, but of course you will still find a lot of European work, a lot of North American work. And there are whole regions of the world where there's very, very little heard of. So, which one of the internationals are we talking about? That I think is really an important question. And here the choices we make can help to tell different stories. And, and I think we could use these um, festivals, for example, to create precedents by making different visions for the world of reality during a limited time or a limited space. And, and then uh, art can make, maybe work as, um, as um, acupuncture which is a picture that I borrow from um, Fustan Nikula, who is a choreographer from, from uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, he works in Kisangani, which is not the capital of Congo, but an even more remote place in the Congo, very difficult to access. And when he, he's asked, well, why on earth is he doing art there? And he, because he's trying to, well, he has set up a studio, recording studio there for artists, and he has a rehearsal space, and 
also performing arts, uh, where he can also show work and so on. And that's his answer. He says that in, he, in this context, this art is like acupuncture and he tries to be present in different quarters of the city in the hope that there can be some impulses through, through what he does. And in, in a way, this, yeah, this is a picture that applies to maybe, in the best case, to all our, of our activities. Now to my list, because exactly this, uh, you often get asked, I was asked the same question also in, when I was in Cairo and uh, when the uh, floor was opened for questions, was like, what are your criteria when you are inviting uh, performing arts? This is the question, of course, no one, none of us likes to answer. <laughs> and uh, and um, that's why I'm not coming with criteria, but with my uh, to-do and not to-do list. I will try to uh, speak a little bit about each one of it. I, I have to say, it's also, it's not an... How do you say that? It's not, this list is maybe not finished, huh? or it might evolve. Some things have to be kicked out eventually and others taken in, I don't know. It's not a programmatic thing, it's just my to-do list. Um, and I will try to give you some concrete examples um, every time with it. Not every time it's gonna be necessary, but I'll try to be more, uh, less uh, generalistic and more <coughs> concrete. So the first one is don't be original be specific. This, with this I mean don't, don't go for the new, don't go for the German premiere, or for, don't go for the opening thing, even if, especially by press, you're still sort of pushed into that corner, um, but I think we should really stop doing this, because it puts terrible pressure on artists, and um, it's not serving either audiences or artists, so, uh, so this whole new thing should be taken out of this festival uh, business and also uh, this, this, this terrible focus on yeah on presenting new work as if it was a, an added value that something is new. I don't believe that that is true. Instead, it would be important to be specific, like I said, so in, a, in the best case for each project, you would, you would really have some very well thought through reason why you will be presenting this work in this festival edition, in this context, in this town where you are doing it at this moment, and so on. So it's, I think, uh, yeah, we have to do more thinking than just grabbing together the, the newest hot, hot shit or something like that. Uh, the next one is focus on context. Um, that I think Ahmed has already elaborated that quite a lot. Of course, the local context where you're working is very important. And uh, also the contexts are plural now. I think it's probably true for a town like Cairo, just as much as a town like Fribourg. I can give you an exa example of uh, Hanover, where I have been working a long time. Um, Hanover in the best like in the best years we made we had about 10,000 spectators with the festival now Hanover has 500,000 inhabitants so which 10,000 of the 500,000 am I addressing and which one is the context whose reality is the context I'm working in and there is of course not one answer to that and we have for example uh, put a lot of thought in theater form into finding out who are in fact the local communities in Hanover. We had a lot of success with inviting work from Russia because there is a huge community of um, immigrants from Russia living in, in Hanover and it was very interesting to see how the Schauspielhaus Hannover was suddenly hijacked by these, by these people who usually never go there and, and, and that is also a local context where suddenly the, the international was the, the local and we as the Germans in that audience were the minority. It was a very interesting shift of uh, experience. So context can also be, yeah, is, context is multiple. And also I think it's important to really try and understand as good as you can the context of where, uh, in which the artists that you work in work. Um, of course, you can only always get only a superficial insight because you will never spend enough time to uh, deeply understand uh, every artist's reality. But of course, by trying to invest in longer-term relationships, um, it's important, I think, also to understand the context. Who is the audience of that artist back home? I mean, who is he doing this work for originally, or she? Um, so that's part of the context work, I think. Then again, define whom you address. I think that's also very important. 
know, know who, you, who you want to talk to. Uh, I mean, it's very obvious, but it's sometimes it's really hard work to ima try and imagine, okay, this particular play, especially given when you have in mind, like I had that in Hanover, that most of my audience is selecting one or two pieces out of my program, who can I reach with what? So you have to sort of be di diverse and again have a numerous, a many number of, a high number of dialogues with very different people in the best case in order to find out who you are talking to through what. Um, a very uh, important aspect, I think, is this one. Don't, I don't, it's not very well formulated, but I don't instrumentalize artistic projects as representants of anything. I think it's super important, especially when you leave Europe, um, not to bring, don't, not to do the Africa focus or the Arab Spring focus or the uh, women uh, from the Arab world focus or the, it's terrible for artists. They hate it and they are right to hate it and it's, it's very, very important. Of course, you have to, a, a, a festival in itself, or also a total, uh, an entire season, I think, is also a way of communicating. Now you're putting together a number of things, and then that tells a story, whether you want it or not. So you also have to work on that story you're telling there, but it's easy, of course, to say, now we're having a focus on that region of the world or something like that, but it's, it's very painful, I think, for artists. And uh, often they don't tell you because they depend on you, um, but don't do it. <clears throat> uh, question and redefine forms of collaboration and in programming. Um, I, I, I tried to talk about that a little bit earlier already. I think this idea of the one programmer, the one curator uh, who is, you know, putting into reality his or her vision of, 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 of some concept or something. Uh, I think it's a model I believe less and less in, uh, because, partly because it's not possible to get an overview, so it's always going to be extremely subjective, the choices you make, and also you, because you don't have the time to access to all the information. So. I haven't found an answer to that, but I'm really searching and looking for other ways of also of traveling less because it's 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 crazy, it's bad for the environment, and it's not good for my health. And also because uh, I, I feel that this cannot be the answer that you have to be personally everywhere. You, there should be other ways that you exchange with people, that you give away some of the responsibility of the programming to others, or that you find of ways of making open calls or juries, or I don't know what, so, but I think that's something that is really, uh, there is a, that needs to be developed. Also to go away, get away from this single person vision model that is a bit 20th century, sort of. Defend spaces for informality and for the unpredictable. Um, yeah, I, I, I like that a lot to, I, I like personally, I like a lot when I'm doing a program, then I like it that, that when, when things happen that I never thought of, you know, the, to be surprised yourself. But in order for that to happen, uh, you, you have to allow certain spaces where you give away the control. And, you, and it's really something you have to, to remember to do uh, and to really protect that and defend that. It's very difficult to fi finance in general. Um, but a good example is that Watch and Talk program, which I talked uh, about before. It's in, in Switzerland, uh, the land of Marvel. They have a Migro a supermarket, which gives parts of his money to cultural projects in a foundation. They finance this program, which is very uh, like a residence for young artists or programmers uh, to, to just be around at a festival and exchange and not produce anything or do anything. And uh, we have run a similar pro project in Festival Theaterform in the past five years as well, which was called the Festival Grant. It was basically inviting young artists from places where they don't have so easy access to contemporary art to attend the festival, to see a lot of things, to meet a lot of people, to exchange amongst each other, and that was it. So we never tried to teach them anything, we never tried to to workshops with them or, you know, we had very uh, loose schedule. They, the only obligation they had was really to show up for all the performances, but the rest, they were quite free and, and it was amazing. And, and amazing things happened. Amazing things, uh, yeah, just happened between them and that was because they had time and, and space and, and so these kind of things I think are very, very, very important. Even if they don't have an immediate outcome, you don't have a product you can present or 
that's why it's difficult to finance. But uh, it's, I think in the, on the long term, this is like this very important to create these kind of spaces. Identify needs around you and respond to them. Uh, it's pretty obvious also, uh, but I guess everybody has also a responsibility for the local art scene uh, just in front of your doorstep and, and, and it's important to, to be in touch also with them and, and to find out what people would also maybe want to see, you know, what, what you, would they want you to bring in. Uh, um, so yeah, be in, it's, it's, it's basically also a reminder to stay in communication. Be aware of the conditions that come with money. Um, obviously, there is hardly any money coming without conditions. Less and less, it's my feeling, but maybe that's just because I'm getting older, I don't know. Um, but most of the time, uh, uh, yeah. It, and and sometimes money comes with conditions, that's pretty obvious. And sometimes, I, I guess, it's you have to really balance uh, whether it's better to have to be more free and have less money or the other way around because often of course uh, it implies i think it's also important to speak openly about that you know to not pretend that someone will just fund something because oof, because they because they are such art lovers i mean that might exist but it's rare i guess also a festival like theater farm financed by the federal state and the two cities and two foundations i mean they also have sort of an agenda why they want to have that kind of festival in their city which is a very okay for them to have that. It's just you have to be aware of it. I think it's important. Hijack your institution from time to time for missions no one asked for. <laughs> that it has to do with that agenda that is normally behind why you are given a contract. Uh, usually, sometimes in your contract it also says what you're supposed to do, what this festival is and what it's supposed to do. And, and it's, of course you have to do that because it's in your contract or that's what you, you were hired for, but it's very important to also do things that they didn't ask for, to, to, to just use your institution to do things that are, yeah. I think maybe the most, the weirdest thing we did in that sense in theater form was uh, we did this connection with a festival in Kinshasa and we had a Kinshasa focus in Hanover, which was totally not obvious. I mean, people kept asking me, but why Kinshasa? And then I would say, why not? <laughs> it's, uh, it, 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 so it was also, fun. in this case, we found some funding from the Bundeskulturstiftung, and, and a lot of that money went into the activities in Kinshasa, but so also not in the activities in Germany. And I think it's important to also do things that have nothing to do with my direct, in this case, had nothing to do with the direct mission of presenting a festival program in Hanover, in that case. <laughs> <clears throat> follow organic procedures. Um, that is very personal uh, one, but uh, I cannot work another way. I, uh, um, I think things need time to develop and, and, and uh, make, making programs and finding, get researching in the contemporary arts field has a lot to do with relations, with per personal relations you have to people and you cannot force them and there are no shortcuts, I think. It's not by attending an ITM meeting that you will have instantly, you know, all the access to. You have to have a talk with someone. You have to have ten beers with someone. You have to, I don't know, be stuck in a bus with someone. You have to, to in order to sort of things to grow and to happen and and trust and and mutual uh, um, confidence to, to 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 grow. And I think it's important to trust that. So I'm a very uh, um, I'm a very uh, loyal uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, programmer for artists. I, I, I keep inviting the same. <laughs> Sometimes I really have to pay attention. But I, I think it's important that you, you, you really you build a relationship and then you just don't drop people in the next day and you know see where it can lead to. Follow it. Uh, let it give it a chance to develop and to grow. And you cannot have a hundred thousand relationships at the time. So things come one after the other. That's normal also. That has to do with that, yeah, no, don't network, meet people. Um, I, I really, I, I don't believe in, in networking, except for maybe I don't, just don't know what it really is, but I'm not interested in that. I'm, I'm very bad at small talks, maybe that's why, and so I, it's important, I, but I think it's better to meet people, to really meet people, and to really have two good conversations with uh, people, rather than 20 meetings with people where you just 
basically exchanged cards or so, or so, yeah. It's pretty clear. Don't advertise, communicate. That's more the one on the field once you have uh, made your, your program. Um, it's this pressure, you know, it depends on where you work, of course, but in the other form, for instance, there, was, there is quite a pressure that the festival has to have an audience. If there is the audience stays away, it's going to be very much quickly in danger. So you had this pressure of having the house full, and, and you very quickly tend to go into this campaigning thing, and you have to remind yourself that you are not selling coffee machines or or burgers, or I don't know, but this is about art, and it's about something that is about communication, and, and it's, it's the, from the moment that you say, this artist is going to come, that the communication should start. It should be a real communication, and not only an advertisement. Be aware of the role you play, that's the one, especially to us uh, European, or maybe North Americans also, uh, People, uh, but especially Europeans, um, of course, when, especially as soon as you lose, uh, leave Europe, uh, you are very quickly in situations where you are realizing that your decision is going to is quite is quite important for the person that you are writing, and it ha really has to depends on the context again. Like for example, in Buenos Aires has a very lively and active and strong theater scene, so usually. If you invite an artist from Buenos Aires, it's great for them and it's wonderful, but it's not going to be a drama if you don't. Whereas in other places, it, a lot more depends on people on that. You, you're creating relevance, you, it's financially important, and, and you have to be aware of that. You cannot outplay it, you cannot pretend that this is not there. My, my, my uh, normal story to that topic is that when I was just starting when I was traveling for Theater de Mer to uh, Ivory Coast, to a festival there in, I think, 2001, uh, an artist came up to me and said, just tell me what kind of work you're looking for, and I'll do that. <laughs> and which is terrible and very clever at the same time, and pretty well describes the role that you, that you play in some contexts. And the last one is this one, uh, challenge the mainstream narrative. I mean, uh, this, these are again very obvious things. We are in a phase where, I don't know, the way we speak about the world, international, uh, the way the, the world is told to us uh, in, the, in the mainstream media or so, is, seems, seems to me leads to really something dangerous. It's, it's very black and white. It's very, we're very much getting back into exoticizing the other, um, uh, the whole confrontation with the Muslim part of the world, I'm just mentioning that. I mean, there's a lot of other things uh, where, where people manipulate uh, a lot, where communication is really poisoned uh, and, 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 and misused for, for political purposes mostly. And I think it's very important to go against that and to, to use these little spaces that we have to tell, to speak differently of the world, to give voice to other uh, opinions, other thoughts, other angles, and and not leave the the floor to uh, yeah to the populists. Okay, that was the last one. I think I that was long enough. <laughs> Thank you.